Hello everyone, this is the Rotor X Atom version 2. I built mine using the HGLRC F428 stack. Down in there features a 28 amp ESC, an F4 flight controller, and the TX02 VTX. Full speed 1106 4500 KV motors, Jim Fan 2540 props, a now broken Cadex Turbo Micro F1 camera. The VTX is broke too. The way I have mine built, it weighs about 88 and a half gram. The only carbon fiber appears to be 3 millimeters thick. So if you've been flying quads for a while, you might remember a day back when our NAS32 days, our F1 days, where running a, a quad like this would require a custom motor mix. Thankfully, we don't have to do that anymore. Betaflight has gotten so good and our flight controllers and components have gotten so good. You don't have to do that. Uh, and the reason why this review stopped where it did, obviously I had a big crash on a, a flight which broke the antenna. It actually pulled the connector right off. And it also smashed up my camera. And, and this kind of highlights one of the issues with this design. And that is that your camera is straight out front. So the, the possibility that you're going to hit something with your camera is pretty good. Um, it probably means that your motors and props are going to take less damage. Um, but this is something that you have to choose. This keeps the camera very clear. So your FPV video is very... Uh, unfettered from any props or anything of that nature you don't have to look at your motors or anything like that you're just seeing the view of you flying through the air which some people greatly desire i myself i would prefer to have these arms out in front a little bit to give me some possibility of getting camera protection now of course if you hit out here on the arm uh, depending upon the size of the object you might spin around it your camera will be fine um, again another one of these things of, of the, the camera nose is actually sticking out further than it did originally. It's pretty much flush with the 3D print here, but because I broke it, it's, you know, discombobulated and it's sticking out here a little bit. But I, I think this would be fine in most cases from a crash over here on the side because it is pretty substantial, especially if you use a not nice long screw coming up through here that will give it some more rigidity. It's a nice thick print. Oh, and I should mention, I... Uh, I cut out the back so I could keep my buzzer on my flight stack. This flight stack has now been in about six different quads. Um, not throwing shade at any of the people who don't like the HGLRC flight stacks. I'm just letting you know that this one has been through a number of different crashes. Um, so your, your mileage may vary when it comes to those things. I got my favorite air blade. I did have to snip it. Um, battery strap, and I was flying it on 4S, but I think that's kind of the biggest thing that you have to look at, is with 3D printed pods and an arm configuration like this, your susceptibility to taking camera damage is going to be pretty good. I would say my advice to you about this particular vehicle is not to spend 30 or $40 on your camera, but to buy one of the pretty good ones, like the F1 from Caddx, 
that's only 19 bucks. That way you can have a couple. And I think this is repairable. You know, the lens didn't bust out. If you can get the camera to focus here, come on. So the lens didn't bust out. You can see possibly right down in there where the housing cracked. So I could get another housing and possibly repair this. And I probably will do that. It's something that you have to take into consideration. And I've said that a few times. I'm sorry. Also, these motors, uh, I got, I have another set of these motors from Full Speed coming. You know, these are the ones that come on the Leader 3, which I reviewed a few video go, videos ago, and I wanted to test them out on other vehicles. The Leader 3 comes in pretty stout, and I think uh, my recollection is 93 grams. This, of course, is a lot less than that, but I really felt that the, conf the performance, and I'm, I am running 4S, I really felt the performance, I expected more. I think this this comes in around 88 grams. I just measured it and I've already forgotten how much it weighs. But it, it's less and it's substantial enough to where you'd think you would notice a performance difference. And I actually think the leader with these same props performs better. And that leads me to think that there's something going on with the air deflection and these pods. Now this is probably the third or fourth vehicle I've had with a pod and a close proximity to props. And there's been discussions about the disc unloading, which the props being the disc and and what we need to maximize our thrust and control. And I, th for me, I, I kind of question these pods, especially when they're in close proximity to the props, because I'm starting to think that some of the disc unloading theory might be correct and that we're losing a good amount of thrust and control by blowing air off the prop into the pod. And then it's got nowhere to go but straight down and it's not very aerodynamic in that. So it may even cause turbulence with more air coming off the prop. I'm not certain of that. But I've flown, like I said, probably four or five different pod-type quads, and I've always found them to be under underperforming. And not dramatic. It just doesn't meet my expectations. Like I said, this is about five to seven grams less than the leader, and I thought the leader flew better with running the same props, same batteries, same motors. So the only real difference is either arm configuration or the pod. And hopefully I pointed out early enough in the video that you could see that the, your USB port is accessible without having to take the uh, pod on and off. You do have to kind of manipulate it just a little bit as you can see. Hopefully you can see as I squeeze down there I, that kind of free up that corner a little bit and then I can get my USB cable. You will need to use a fairly narrow one of course. Like this one is pretty narrow. Um, let me see if I got another one laying here to show you. Here, I've got several. If you've got these kind over here that are kind of thicker, um, those probably aren't going to do you any good. They're probably not going to slip through there, as you can tell. This one I was showing you, hopefully it's quite a bit thinner, more sleek. Uh, so you may need to get a specialized cable in order to route it through that pod, should you choose to uh, make something like this. I think the big benefit of the Rotor X stuff is that, you know, that's a company that you can get behind their products because the fact that they'll be behind you. So if you buy their products, and I, I this came from Airblade, and Airblade, I believe Mr. Airblade is one of the original possible employees or founders of Rotor X way back in the day, and they were they were very instrumental in micros like this coming about. They were one of the first companies to really look at quads and saying. I wonder how small we can make one of those and to start designing them. And I think the Atom was one of the first like hobby grade quads. So you, you could take to the skies with something a lot smaller than the five and the six inch quads that we had at that time. I guess we didn't have six inch quads. Maybe we did. Anyways, the much bigger quads that we had at the time. So I'm thankful for them. And I know that they have ventured out and done a number of other products. But uh, so with that, we should have a good quality print as we see here. And we should also have good quality carbon. I forgot, this is something that I normally do, is try to show you the layout of the carbon so you get a pretty good idea of the frame. I know that there's a vocal subsection of you that want to know, and it is, especially this rear arm, is a bit flexible. I don't think that's coming through real well. The front one doesn't really bend much, but the back one does. So that probably has to do with the, the layout of the carbon and the, the strength of it. Oh, another thing about the pod is it's really meant for M3 hardware. These holes are really designed around M3 hardware, so I had to use little washers because I am using that HGLRC flight stack that uses M2 hardware. So I had just sourced these actually uh, quite a while ago from a local hobby shop or a local hardware store, excuse me, and uh, that worked out just fine. It's probably not quite the look you're going for if you're getting something like this and you're wanting to build it up, you know, having those washers up there probably isn't what you're shooting for but it's what I had to do to make mine work. I do note on the bottom of the frame they have these cutouts so you can get your strain relief from your battery that's going to be pretty important because the unlike the leader 
um, which I don't meaningly compare it to this one. It's just because I recently have spent quite a bit of time with the leader um, and this one. So the pod doesn't have that same sort of battery support in it that you find in the leader pod. So th it is very good that they've included not one, but two sets or two locations where you can secure down your battery lead to give yourself some strength and relief if the battery were to eject after a violent crash. The carbon feels nice. No sharp edges. Very clean. Milling and cutting. Nothing to complain about as far as the the frame and the pod goes everything looked good i just worry that the disc unloading or the thrust we have isn't maximized with this proximity of prop to the pod that's my big concern but i have always been one to reserve the right to be wrong and i could be wrong in this case as well as other cases but those are my thoughts if you have any comments questions suggestions please leave those in the section down below i appreciate your time and thanks for watching